Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, Psalm, this study has been so, just the word that comes to my mind is so sweet. Um, it has done so much in our lives of understanding the ancient of old. Lord, not only understanding some of their walk and what they experienced in their high holy days and uh, the theocracy, and it, it's also showing us the consistency, the truth of who you are and what you have were to them and what you are to us, who you are to us and how steadfast you are and how consistent you are and you do not change. We're grateful for that. Thank you that as we read in Romans that tells us that that scripture really is there to show us and it is this example for us and how to live. And so Lord, we thank you that as we look at their lives, that we glean truths from their lives. We get an understanding. We look at their flaws. We look at the how they lived. We look at the relationships they were in. We look at how they, they dealt as a nation. God, we're thankful that we learn from them. So, Lord, we just glory in the fact that you are God, and we ask you tonight as we continue in this study that you would teach us, that you would open up our understanding, that you would give us eyes to see. And as I always ask, Lord, give us giant-sized ears to hear. Lord, may we not just be doers, hearers of the word, but may we be doers of your word. In the heart places of our lives, may we be doers of your word. In the places where we don't understand what's going on, may we still trust and be doers of your word. In the storms that we walk through, doers of your word. When we're in, on the mountaintop, doers of your word. And walking in relationship with you, trusting you day by day, moment by moment, and Lord, sometimes it's second by second. But we thank you that your love is unfailing and that your grace is sufficient for us. Make my tongue the pen of a ready writer, I pray. Lord God, please, for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Well, on last week, we studied the king and his kingdom. And we were looking introspectively. As I told you last week, it was a time of just doing some self-examining and looking introspectively at the king and his kingdom. Who is this king? The characteristics of the king. What did his kingdom, what does his kingdom look like from being in the old covenant, this theocratic uh, nation to now in this new covenant and how it has expanded and so many of us, we've been included into this new covenant in this kingdom. What does the kingdom look like? And if you and I were really living fully, truthfully in the kingdom, what is our submission to the king? What does our submission to the king look like? Do we really understand that he is sovereign, that he's in complete control? That is our king and his kingdom. Well, this, me this week, this message also is one of those that's going to be introspective and self-examining for us. Because our aim in this lesson is to take perhaps what has become uh, old to us and it become new, what has become familiar to us, that it would become unfamiliar because I'm going to look at two passages of scripture that I would say predominantly most of us have heard these scriptures or read these scriptures that we're going to look at tonight. But I want us to aim to look at the shepherd and the sheep. That was one of the points I wanted to make on last week that I did not get an opportunity to finish up or start into. But I want us to look at the shepherd and the sheep. As we can look and we want to ascertain, are we living in the daily reality of that relationship? And I don't know about you, just as I've been studying the shepherd and sheep and just going through the psalm and especially looking at the shepherd-sheep relationship, I had to be honest, when I looked at the characteristics of the shepherd and the characteristics of a sheep, as particularly the characteristic of the shepherd, that I had to ask myself the question, could I really say that I trust the shepherd? Do I really believe that even when things are not going well, that he is the good shepherd? Or do those words just come out of my mouth? 
or am I really living fully and believing this, not just in my head, but is it really in my heart that he is the good shepherd? Do I really see that? And I had to be honest with myself to say that as I studied the scriptures, and I pray that you will be honest tonight as we look at this to say, there are some areas perhaps that I'm not as submitted in that as I should be as a sheep. Would you agree? That perhaps there are some areas of my life that there is more self-dependency, self-reliance, instead of relying on the shepherd. That as I looked at the characteristics of a shepherd and a sheep, I had to admit that there are some places that fear controls more than trust. That there are some places that, where there's striving instead of resting in the care of a good shepherd. Can anybody just witness with me and say, because I look at the shepherd and sheep. And tonight I pray that you and I, as we go into this time together and dig into the word of God, that we would be honest with ourselves and we would really say, Lord, I really want the shepherd-sheep relationship because you are good but I really want to walk in the fullness of that relationship. What does it mean to have the Lord as your shepherd? How do you relate to him as a shepherd? How do you see yourself as a sheep? What is our behavior like? So let's look at John chapter 10. That's where we're going to start tonight in this parable, which this parable tells of a biblical truth for us. We're going to look at John chapter 10. And we'll start reading at verse 1, and we're going to try and dissect this together. And if you're taking notes, I know it wasn't one of your lessons, but I want you to do this in a self-examining way, that you would write things about yourself, that you would even take note about how you see Jesus as your shepherd. John chapter 10, verse 1 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, He who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climb up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. Verse 2 says, but he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. Make note of that. If you take notes in your Bible, it would be good for you to underline and, and to circle. I circle the word door. Verse 3 says, to him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep do what? They hear his voice, and he calls his, his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. I love that. Verse 4, when he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them. You get that? He goes ahead of them, and the sheep do what? They follow because they know his voice. A stranger, they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech, Jesus spoke to them, but they did not understand when, what those things were which he had been saying to them. Now, Jesus is talking, and we'll see when we back back a little bit, to these Pharisees and these religious leaders. Look at verse 7. So Jesus said to them again, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find what? Will find what? The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Leave your Bible open there, because we're going to walk through this passage of Scripture together as we look at the shepherd and the sheep. Just some of the things that we just know right off about in studying this particular text is that Jesus opens up and he says to them, truly, truly, barely, barely. Some translations will say barely, barely, but truly, truly. So you get a word twice, takes it to another level of importance. It's, it's an attention getter. It, it's, you need to pay attention when a word is, comes back to back twice, truly, truly, and very important. 
So he's making a statement, and why? He's saying to them, truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and he is a robber. Some translations will say, most assuredly, I say to you. And this follows, if you look in John chapter 9, this will follow right in John chapter 9 when Jesus heals a, a boy who is born blind. He heals this man who was born blind, and here it is, the religious leaders who in that day would have been looked at, as we've learned in this ancient system, that they would have been looked at as a type of shepherd, political leaders that were looked at as some type of shepherd and leaders, and so they would have been looked at in this particular way. And so here it is in John chapter 9, this man who was born blind, Jesus heals them and all of the religious leaders around, they have issue with the fact that Jesus has healed this man who was born blind and they throw his parents out of the temple. Has anybody ever read that before? The Pharisees, it says in verse 15 of chapter uh, 9, then the Pharisees also were asking him, again, how he received his sight. The Pharisees were asking the boy, how did he receive his sight? Jesus has healed him, and they're not satisfied with that. And so Jesus uses this parable to pull them in and to tell them who he is. And remember, again, these are the Pharisees that are religious. They walk around religious. They try and say, who is able to come in the kingdom? Who cannot? They're the religious leaders of the day, and they are the ones who are out to get Jesus and catch him and all kinds of ways because they're not accepting that he is indeed the Messiah. As he says, I am the shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. This was a conflict with these religious leaders. This was a conflict for them. So listen to what he says. He says to them, now I'm the door. I'm the one that they have to come through. And in verse 2, go back, he says, but he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. Understand, in that time, there was what the, how it was made, there was a sheep pen, and there was one door. And that shepherd would lay down in front of that door to protect the sheep. Are you with me? We're going to look at these characteristics of the shepherd and the sheep. And that shepherd would lay down in front of that door to make sure that no wolf could come in. Nothing could come in and bother that sheep. And that sheep would be safe in the shepherd's care. Jesus says, I'm the one. I, I do that. I am the door. Verse 3, to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep do what they hear his voice. So I want you to back back. I want you to understand this. When he says, all that ever came before me were thieves and robbers, the, he says, this, I'm speaking to this and how they gain entry to the sheep. Because there's a way to gain entry into the sheep. You're thief and robber if you don't come in through the door. And so you're not accepting who I am as the shepherd, the good shepherd. And so they are, they're just thieves and robbers because they don't care about the sheep. The Pharisees didn't care about the sheep. They cared about their own political and religious agenda. And Jesus is setting it straight and giving him a beautiful metaphor of what this is all about. But then I want to focus in on this for a minute. He says in verse 4, when he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of him. And the sheep do what? They do what? Come on, they do what? I know I set out tonight, I'm hoping to take what has become familiar to us and make it unfamiliar because how many of us have read this passage over and over again? But you and I need to see it differently tonight because if I'm sheep and you're a sheep, then it says that we follow the voice of the good shepherd. He says they follow his voice. I got to ask you tonight, what voice are you following? What voice am I following? Am I following the voice of the day? Am I following the news of the day? Am I following whatever pundit is talking of the day? Am I following whatever uh, preacher is most popular of the day? Am I following whoever is on social media the most of the day? Whose voice do I know? Because the voice that you know the best, I guarantee you that's the voice you're following. Whose voice are you listening to? What, is, what voice is more dominant in your life right now? What's the dominant voice? Because he says, my sheep, they hear my voice. Now, I just got to go here for a minute. My sheep hear my voice. There is nothing wrong with listening to podcasts. There is nothing. You should come to church 
and in community, we've already talked about that. You need community. It says in Hebrews, don't forsake the assembling of yourself together. We come to church as believers to worship. You should hear a word from the pulpit for on Sundays or whenever you show up for church service that encourages you, that gives you the gospel of Jesus Christ, that corrects us, that instructs us, that trains us up in righteousness. We should hear the word of the God, a word of God. But if you are quoting the other person, Come on now. More than you're quoting scripture, you're going down the wrong way. If all you can ever say is, let me tell you what Pastor Darrell said. Let me tell you what Tara said. Let me tell you what Rosalind said. Let me tell you what Giannina said. Let me tell you what Beth Moore said. Let me tell you what Lisa Harper said. Let me tell you what Christine Kane said. Let me tell you what T.D. Jake said. Let me tell you what Steve Furtick said. You're going down the wrong way. You're going down the wrong way. That cannot be. And, and we all say, we, we may all say some good stuff, but when you get through hearing us, you need to go fact check and get the Bible and read it for yourself. As a matter of fact, you should come to church with your Bible. Don't get quiet on me right here because we live in a society right now where we are more prone to just take whatever is said to us. And we've gotten, can I just be honest, we've gotten, I said I, I, I meant to do a precursor before this so that you wouldn't say she fussed tonight. Because I'm not fussing, or I may be fussing, but I'm fussing in love. Because at some point in time, we have got to grow up and mature in the word of God. To say that the Bible is too hard to read is no excuse. To say that it's boring, it is not. It is one of the most intriguing books you will ever get your hands on. To say that you don't have time is no excuse. We all have time. To show up at church without a Bible and just depend on whatever somebody, what if the screens go out and the scripture can't go on the screen, then what? What if your, Lord help me, what if your cell phone that's making us dumb people stop working? Come on, I'm telling the truth. Don't get tight, it's all of us. They so smart, we don't even remember phone numbers no more. And, and if we needed to remember, you couldn't call it up. You'd be in an emergency and can't call nobody. That's how we're gonna be. If we don't know the word of God, we got emergency situations, but we can't call up scripture. I, I just gotta ask you, do we know his, his voice? Because he said his sheep. So how many sheep in the house tonight? How many sheep in the house tonight? How many sheep in the house tonight? Well, he said his sheep know his voice, and there is a way for you and I to know his voice, and we've got to get into the word of God. We've got to be students of the word of God. The Bible says, study to show yourself approved, a workman unto God that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. That's not just for the preachers and the teachers. That's for you, too. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. You gotta spend time with the shepherd. You gotta spend time getting to know his voice. And can I just tell you, sometimes getting to know the shepherd's voice, there are times in our relationships where we're growing up, we're gonna get it wrong. That's part of getting to know the shepherd's voice, is that I thought, oh, I thought you said this. And the correction comes, because the shepherd corrects as well. The shepherd leads, the shepherd guides, and he corrects, and sometimes we get it wrong, and we will say, anybody ever just said, I just thought it was definitely the Lord that told me to do that. And you, he corrected you, but it was a way of him teaching you to come closer to hear his voice. He said, my sheep know my voice. There is this word that speaks to knowing the shepherd's voice, and this word is called akuo. And this word about hearing the shepherd's voice means to be endowed with the faculty of hearing. You're not deaf. We can hear. But it's not just that. It's intently considering what has been said. Ladies, I plead with you tonight as a sister in Christ. Don't just keep taking Bible studies and have a very empty book. 
Jesus said, the shepherd said, that my sheep hear my voice. A stranger's voice, he won't follow. I always tell this story, and I, I, I hadn't planned on sharing it, but I feel led to share it right now, a stranger's voice. I, I told you sometimes you get it wrong, right? Anybody can witness when you've just gotten it wrong sometimes, right? Got it wrong. And it was, that's why I'm telling you, in the storm of your life, if you don't know the shepherd's voice, it is real easy to be swayed and rocked. Because anybody ever been in a storm, what do you want with the storm? You want it to what? Come on, talk back to me, ladies. You want it what? Why y'all trying to act like, I just want to stay in the storm? No, you don't. You want what? You want out. And so sometimes, there are times in the midst of that storm, when you've been walking with the shepherd and you're the sheep, you know you're his sheep, that you just open your Bible and you turn to the scripture that feels best. You turn to a scripture that says exactly what you wanted to say. Oh, and you just go, oh, this just has to be God. It just gets me right into my emotions. It made me feel good. I know it's him because it just gave me this sense of just calmness and peace. And you think it's him, but you just didn't ask him. You just opened or you just got that little book that I said can be dangerous sometime, that God promise book that you just open at the back where it says promises, promises for this. And they give you one and you go right to it, that's a dangerous little book. Because it doesn't mean that it's his promise for you right then. Anybody with me? You got to be careful. You got to go to the shepherd. And I found myself in that situation in the midst of a storm. And I picked, it felt like it just got this, it's got to be him getting me out of this storm. And the girls still laugh at me when I tell them the story that I went to that service and that guy was preaching. That's why I'm, maybe I'm so hard pressed on you to know the word that you don't get caught up in somebody just telling you something for the moment. And there it was. He was saying exactly what I felt I needed to hear and dear. And it was okay the first night. Some of y'all have heard this. Went back the second night. And the Lord says, I'm the good shepherd. I'm going to teach you because that's not my voice. He had to get me right to where I could understand it. Because as I always say, anybody knows me, I like my fashion. And the guy took out the oil, and he started slinging it everywhere. And at that point, when it hit my clothes, it was time for me to go. Now, you may say, that's carnal. It just got on your clothes. No. It's something else that happened. My mind shifted. I said, something, this isn't God because you're just slinging it everywhere. And I went home and I got on my knees and started to pray and said, Lord, help me. I'm sorry. What were you showing me? And it's clear as day. Then he spoke to me about what he, in the storm, these words came from him. This storm is from me. Then the peace came because it was the good shepherd who had spoken. He said, my sheep know my voice and you all, we have got to get to the point where we open up our Bibles, where we study, where we come into community and we, we hear the word of God, but we also read the word of God. Because how many of you all know there are a whole lot, there's a whole lot of bad theology out there? There's a whole lot of false teaching out there. There are a whole lot of feel-good messages, and you can find them any time of day. There's a whole lot of live it up right now and live your best life right now that doesn't line up with what the gospel of Jesus Christ says. I just got to tell you that. You're quiet, so you're going to go home and throw those books away. <laughs> to hear means to comprehend and understand. So how much time are we spending to comprehend and to understand the word of God? He says, my sheep hear my voice, a stranger's voice he won't follow. So Jesus uses this picture this for them to be able to see because in that day and time, they totally understood shepherd sheep. We may not get it because we don't live in a time where, we're, where, where we are shepherdess and where we're, we're keeping sheep. We don't, we're not pastoralists. They got it in that day. All Every person in, in 
in, in Israel, when you said shepherd sheep, they understood it. And that's why they knew there was a difference between a good shepherd and a bad shepherd. And Jesus says, I'm the good one. Because there's some bad ones out there. You know, there's some false teaching out there. There's some stuff right now in our culture. And, and in, even in some of the Christian teaching out there that doesn't line up biblically to where you and I, it sends us into this tailspin of thinking our life is supposed to look a certain way. And sheep start comparing their life to another sheep. How many sheep in here start to compare? Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> you start comparing your life that your life should look this way. And your life should look this way according to what's being said. That by this time, I always tell the young people, that by this time, you should be at this point in juncture in your life. No, Jesus says, I know them all by name. Now, I want you to, I want to deal with this just for a minute, because if he knows you by name, then that means he knows what he put inside of you. Ladies, let's please get this, because what he put inside of you, he didn't put inside of me, ladies. The gifts and talents he put inside of you is not inside of her, but he knows what he called you to do. And he knows what he called you to do. And he's got sheep all over this world. He's got sheep all over this world doing different things, do, performing in different ways. That's missions, that's teaching, that's preaching, that's singing, that's working as lawyers, that's working a, in Walmart, that's working in Walgreens, that's all over there are his sheep. And he put the sheep there for a reason. They're in his fold. And if we could ever just get our minds wrapped around that, that our lives are not supposed to be cookie cutter and look like someone else. I put, put up the, the picture of this sheep. I want you to see because the Awasi sheep, as we look at the sheep, some of the things about us, look at this sheep, beautiful. And as you studied in your lesson, they're good. They're, 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 they're how the, the clothing that comes from them, the, the milk, the meat, just, I love this. And I said I wouldn't say this on camera, but I have to because I think it's the cutest thing. There's fat stored up in their tail. Y'all supposed to laugh at that. <laughs> now you get it. Rosalind, you got it late, but you got it. That's true. Did you look up the facts? It's stored for a reason. And it's precious. And it's like a reserve. I mean, just look at how he made that sheep. Look at that. Put it back up there. That, that beautiful Awashi sheep that was known for that time. And that land for all of the things. So when they talked about this sheep, that sheep and all that it was going to produce, it was very valuable. It was a very valuable commodity. The milk, everything that was going to come from it, the meat, uh, how they were going to use the hair, what they would use it for, valuable. Now can you see yourself as value or valuable sheep? Because see, the sheep are just as valuable as the shepherd, the shepherd says that the sheep is valuable to me. That's why he lays in front of the gate to protect it. Now, come on, ladies, are you getting I want you to see this relationship right here. It's a beautiful relationship. If you and I could trust that the shepherd really does look after the sheep, this particular sheep, not only that, get this with the sheep, it's nearsighted. <laughs> it's, it's nearsighted. You're nearsighted. Just go ahead and tell you something. How many, we think we know everything? And we think we can see so far down the line. That's why you need to get kind of concerned when people start saying, I can see your life 10 years from now. The good shepherd does. Y'all get real quiet. Is it convicting? Because, see, we go searching for every other voice. And this sheep, that, he's nearsighted. Here's the other thing about the sheep. Panics easily. Panics very, how many of us panic very easily? Come on, can we just get free tonight? Just say the word free. Come on, get free tonight. You, we panic easily. You got all kind of scriptures stored up. You be quoting and quoting and quoting. I know because I quote too. But let something happen. We panic easily. Sheep panic easily. And then we cry. And when that particular sheep panics and cries, guess what? It's that the, that the prey, the predator, can hear the cry. Let me tell you something. You need to know that when you and I panic and we cry, the predator is always after us, but we have a good shepherd that watches over us. And he's keeping us from things that we don't even see that he's keeping us from. And for some of us, we're crying out for some stuff that we want, and he's saying, you don't even need it. I'm going to keep you from that too. 
because I know what's best for you. Nearsighted, panics, is vulnerable, will wander off. Look, that's, that's you and I. We just, that's us as, as sheep. We really don't know what we need. And let me tell you something else about that sheep. It's unable to defend themselves. We can't defend ourselves. But the good shepherd does. I want you to understand this. We stray terribly. David understood that we stray. When he says, I am the good shepherd, they hear my voice, a stranger's voice. They will not follow. Before I wrap this with David and Psalm, I I just got to ask you to just do a little bit of introspective thinking. How am I following a stranger's voice of this day? Because we need to ask ourselves that. How am I following a stranger's voice? Am I so connected to the good shepherd, trying to hear his voice, getting close to him in relationship? Let me give you another example to bring this home to you. I, I, I was saving this for Sunday in the message with my husband. The Lord showed me something on stage the last time that we had communion. And I was singing, and I was about to take the communion. And he had preached about the Holy Spirit in the series of the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, as he's been in this series, I've been praying to get closer to the Good Shepherd, praying to know the Holy Spirit's move in my life even more, praying to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer of the word. I want to be like we would say the good shepherd and those sheep were just so confident that they would listen out for his voice and when he he would watch over them, just the confidence to know that though things happen in life that don't feel good, that God is good. I don't want to sing songs and say that he's good, but don't believe that he really is good even when it doesn't feel good. Anybody with me on that? When we got ready to take the communion, and I was getting ready to lift the cup, and I heard so clearly, the Lord said, you've been married to him for 30 years. The relationship is sealed. You're in a relationship. But the depth of you being able to know him is how much you really spend time paying attention to him. It was clear as a bell. The depth, you, the relationship is yours. You're married. But the depth of knowing him is how much you pay attention to him, that you're intentional about it, that you're listening, that you're in the moment, not just sitting there, but really sitting there. Now, come on. Not that you're just in church, but you don't get quiet, that you're, Come on now, come on. Not that you're going through the motion of singing the song, but you're really. Not that you just buy the Bible study book, but you. Oh, come on, now we're on a roll. Now we're on a roll. Not that you just got the Bible on your coffee table, but that you. That's ever so clear. You're a sheep, but how close you get to the shepherd depends on what you're willing to do in the relationship because the shepherd hadn't moved. Perhaps you have. David got it. David got it. That's why this David that we read about In Psalm 23, this Davidic psalm, he understood it because as a little boy, he got the shepherd analogy because the shepherd would always, it was like the lowest task. And here it is, little David had been called to be that shepherd boy in his family. And God, if you read in Samuel, had chosen him. He says, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And this little boy, God had established him to be a shepherd. He got the shepherd relationship. He got the analogy. And that's why we could read about a David who was after God's heart, that when he put his finger on on something and said, you are the man, when Nathan showed up and gave him, there was a man with a little ewe lamb. 
after he had sinned with Bathsheba and had Uriah killed. I'm trying to wrap this thing here. I want you to get it. That's why David got it when he says, there was a man with a little you, you lamb when Nathan came to him. He got it. He said, that man surely ought to die because he knew the love of a shepherd taking care of his sheep. And when Nathan said, you are the man, David said, it is me. And he bowed his knee to Yahweh. David got it. This is this David that God chose, that he called out, if you read in 2 Samuel. This is that David. We've read about him in Psalm 32, how he comes back and, and blesses the one whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. David understood it. And so David says, as we wrap, he wraps and he says in Psalm 23, that the Lord is my what? He is my what? Come on, are we talking about this shepherd and this sheep? David understood what a sheep needed. He would fight for his sheep. He would protect his sheep. He said, the Lord is. It's not because of my righteousness. It's because he is my shepherd. I understand the relationship. Can I just tell you, it's not about perfection. This is not about us living perfectly. None of us ever would or ever will. But this is about us understanding this is a shepherd-sheep relationship. So David says, the Lord is. You won't look at Psalm 23 the same again. It's personal relationship. You ought to take that psalm and put your name in it. The Lord is. You, did the charcuterie little cute little food put you to sleep tonight? The Lord is who? The Lord is Tara Shepherd. And in case we're wor worrying about something, he said, I shall not do what? How many of us walking around want worrying about everything? Just worrying, worrying about what we're going to do about this, what we're going to do about our kids, what we're going to do about this, what we're going to do about this. He said, David says, listen, I know who owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I know who's in control, and so he's my shepherd. I shall not want. You ought to wake up and I shall not want. He may not give me what I need today, but I shall not want. All my problems may not be solved right now, but I Here's why he says, he makes me. Sheep need green pastures. <laughs> Sheep need green pastures. And can I tell you, you and I don't know how to find them on our own. He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He gives me rest for my soul. He restores my You and I, there are places in our life where we need restoring. He restores my, my soul, my mind my will, and my emotions. Anybody ever, can, you can witness to him restoring your soul. Come on, I, I don't want to wrap in five minutes. I know you got to go to your rooms and talk a little bit, but anybody ever been through something and you felt like you were just going to lose your mind? You felt like you were at the end of your wits, but he restored your, he restored your, your mind, your that he kept your mind, what would have or should have driven you crazy, you're walking around saying, because the Lord kept your mind. He restores my soul. The shepherd leads the way. He leads me in the path of what? Righteousness. For his name's sake. Why? Because he's the good shepherd. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through what? which tells you and I, we're going to walk through some stuff, ladies. Listen, this, this stuff that tells you that everything's supposed to be great, don't you listen to nobody tell you that. The minute you start, I'm, I'm going to say it, the minute you get somewhere and start, everybody, somebody starts telling you, you know, it's gonna, you, if you're on God's side, you ought not have any problems. Your bank account ought to be loaded, and all of your bills ought to be paid. Get up and leave. Turn off that TV. You hear me very clearly because that's, that's a false teacher. I will say that very, very boldly because that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said you're going to walk through the valley. Fear is going to be present. Look, there, you're going to have some trouble. You're going to have some trials. But he says because I have a good shepherd, I don't have to fear evil. 
I remember my husband said to me, what, through some of the toughest times of pastoring here at Christ the Rock, through some of the hardest storms we've been through, and he stood up there and preached, and I would say to him, you know, because our personalities are different, and thank God, because if we had the same personality, we'd be in trouble. We'd be, like, that we'd be in trouble. We'd just, we'd just be in trouble, because I'm like a freight train, and he pulls my, my, my cord and says, hey, slow down, slow down. And I asked him, I said, some of the things I was like, you going to take this? You're not going to say anything? You're not going to, you just going to, he said, Tara. And he said it ever so calmly. I don't have to fear evil. He said, you need to learn never fear evil. Even when it looks like the evil is overcoming, just sit back. You got a fever? That's what I said. You got a fever? You all right? He said, you never have to fear evil. Because God will always deal with evil. And he said, sometimes you need to get it in your head. Sometimes it's going to look like you're on the losing side. But God will always deal with evil. He says, I, David said, I had a whole lot of hellhounds chasing me. <laughs> I had a whole lot. Of, I know about wars. I know about bad times. He said, I feel no evil. Why? Because Ladies, because what? Do y'all know Psalm 23? Do you believe it? He says, you're with me. You're what? Your rod and your staff comfort me. The rod, but you'll pull me back. You, hey, look, you're going to keep stuff away from me. Your staff, the shepherd's staff, leading the way. He said, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Knowing that you're the shepherd, you got the tools that you, that's needed for a shepherd, I'm comforted by that. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You got a table. And everybody in here got enemies. But don't think about enemies in the flesh. And think about the enemies that want to rob your joy, whether take your peace away. The real enemy that wants to devour you. He says, you'll prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup. It just overflows because you're the one to anoint me. You're the one to bring success into my life. You're the one to lead and guide me in the way that I should go. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy is going to follow me all the days of my life. And when it's all over, David knew that when it's all over, at the end of this, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. He knew that he would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I love that because one of the Psalms speaks of that. David knew that when he gets to the end of his life, he said, the Bible even says how he shepherded Israel well. Because he knew as the shep under shepherd, he knew the good shepherd. Goodness and mercy is going to follow me all the days of my life. Listen, I have to ask you, even in this, Knowing the shepherd and the sheep. Sheep wander off. David had wander off. He knew about wander. We'll wander off. I'm going to end with this because I want to tie it into where we go next week with the lament. We wander off sometimes. So if you're in here, you wander. We all look at places where we wander. I love what he says as we look at the nation next week and they wander off. And they're not shepherded well. And they go into Babylonian captivity. I want us to see that the good shepherd, even in our captivity, will deliver us out of captivity. That he won't leave us there. That some of us are in some heart, in some places of our life that the Lord says, I'm just letting you learn this lesson now. This is a lesson. But you're not going to stay there. You're walking through some stuff, but you're not going to stay there. And I love what Isaiah 30 says to us, if you get an opportunity, I wanted to read it tonight, but I don't have the time. But he says to these people that have wandered off, he says, you'll hear a voice behind me. You'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it, whether you turn to the right or to the left. He, they've wandered off from him. They're not listening. They don't even want to hear the voice of the shepherd. They've gone off to get help from Egypt, and he told them not to do it. But he says that when it's all over and you, you get the bread of adversity for your teacher and the water of affliction, they're going to teach you. They're not going to be removed from you because you got to learn the voice of the good shepherd. He said you'll hear a voice behind you 
saying this is the way, walk in it. So when you wander to the right or to the left, when you get off the path, know that the good shepherd will pull you back, that the good shepherd comes to rescue his sheep. He's not out to devour us. He's not out to take us out. He's the good shepherd. Even in his correction, it is a correction of love. And he says to them, I long to be gracious to you and to restore you. We'll see that in our lesson next week, that even for us as sheep, when we wander off, that he's still good, that he's a shepherd that restores. The song I love, it says, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. I'm prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Take and seal it. Seal it for thy court above. He knows his sheep by name because he is the good shepherd. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Shepherd and sheep relationship. Thank you that the ancients leave this beautiful walk with us of showing us the shepherd and sheep. And even when sheep wander off, how you pull us back, how you as the good shepherd, you go after us, you pursue us. And Lord, for some of us, they're in a place of discipline right now, things that are showing us where we're out of alignment with your will and your purpose. I pray that we would know that it's the shepherd's voice, the shepherd's goodness that's correcting us so that we can get on the right track. Lord, for some of us, we just need our eyes, our perspective to change and believe that you're good in spite of the circumstances that we've experienced. Lord, would you pull up and uproot the lies that some of us have believed about the characteristics of the shepherd and his love and how he really does go after the sheep and will watch after us and know us by name. Lord, there are some women in here that perhaps feel forgotten and some on Zoom that feels like they've been forgotten in the midst of a prayer request that's been long and ongoing. But would you let them know that the good shepherd has heard and that the good shepherd cares? Lord, I pray that we would hear your voice, that your voice would be so important to us that we would seek you that we would open up our Bibles, that we would study the word of God, that we would be doers of your word, that we would ask you every day, Lord, give us giant size ears to hear you so that we can silence the noise of this world. You are the good shepherd and you love every one of your sheep. Lord, thank you. Yes. For some of us, we believe the lie that one sheep is loved more than another. Lord, would you pull up that lie as well? You love all of your sheep. And it's not based on where we are in our spiritual journey. It's based on your unfailing love for each and every one of us. Thank you. Thank you, good shepherd. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.